Hi everyone, Shirtlad here. The game SD Gundam Gashbon Wars for Nintendo GameCube is a fairly interesting little game. Combining grid-based turf wars with the arena-based combat evocative of the early Gashapon Senshi games for the NES. It's simple and fun, though the game doesn't explain certain things right from the get-go, at least not in English. As such, I'm going to attempt doing so myself. Outside of the campaign, the versus mode and challenges, you are given the option to make your own team lineup before starting a match of Capsule Wars on one of the game's many maps. All of them are composed of square fields that represent different terrains. There's also a set of strategic points that you can capture and hold in order to gain an advantage over your opponent during these matches. With the overview out of the way, let's get more into the details. Before a match of Capsule Wars start, you get to customize your team composition by tapping the X button. This can also be done by going to Main Menu, Options and Capsule Box Edit. The E and subtitles in the major menus sure do come in handy. Anyways, regardless of how you get there, there is a total of 12 slots you can put your units into, as well as a specific number above the Capsule Box interface. This is the total unit cost limit, which corresponds to the max amount of star points your team can have. You see, each unit has a set point cost indicated on the lower right corner of its icon and in the unit list on the right half of the screen. A general rule of thumb is that more powerful units cost more. So, having selected a slot in the box interface using the A button, you have to select a unit from the unit list and complete your formation. If you're wondering how to increase the cost limit for the formation, it goes up as you clean more and more stages. You also get more units as you play. Having a good formation is often half the battle. The other half is the combat itself. And to not bore you with the stat sheets just yet, let's cover the main arena combat. Once a unit is moved onto a tile that an enemy is standing on, combat begins, with units from adjacent tiles joining in as well. Each time a battle starts, one of the teams is briefly stunned. If you already see an enemy and attack it, the enemy team starts out stunned. But if you run into an enemy by surprise, it is the attacker that gets briefly stunned instead. The controls themselves are fairly straightforward. You move with the left control stick, the A button is used for jumps and evasion, the B button is used for shooting, X makes your unit tackle, and Y is for melee. For blocking, you have the left bumper, and the right bumper lets you use a special attack and or transform. Sometimes you can also tap the Z button to maintain the lock-on, otherwise aiming operates based on proximity, locking onto the closest enemy to your unit. It's also possible to switch the unit to computer control. During combat, there's also power-ups that drop onto the stage, some that help and some that hinder. Generally, I'd say the combat is fairly bare-bones, with the three main types of attacks having a rock-paper-scissors dynamic, with tackle countering melee, melee countering shots, and shots intercepting tackles. Blocking just mitigates damage. It's simple, but it works. Not to mention, there are some status effects in the mix too. In this game, there are three main unit types, just like in Gundam Battle Operation 2. But this time around, the Rock Paper Scissors categories of Raid Support in general are much more blatant with the icons being Red Scissors, Blue Rock and Green Paper. It is fairly self-explanatory, with Rock types dealing more damage to Scissor types but getting countered by Paper types and so on. As stated earlier, the high-end ones do cost more points, but on top of the modifiers imposed by the Rock Paper Scissors system, each unit has certain advantages and disadvantages based on what type of terrain it's fighting in. For example, if you take the Gapland underwater or use the Sword Strike Gundam in outer space, you're gonna have a bad time. Not to mention that mobile suits that are specialized for ground and space get heavily disadvantaged, should they venture outside of their preferred terrain. These are in Japanese, but I did manage to translate most of them. Also, if you move your in-game cursor over a tile, it straight up tells you what type of terrain it is. The various maps additionally feature snow tiles and minefield versions of space and sand tiles. Fortunately for you, each unit has its own stat card, where you can easily keep track of its weaknesses and its strong suits. During matches, you can also access the stat sheet by using the X button with your cursor over the unit, with the mid-match unit stat sheets being even more detailed. And yes, you can view those in the gallery mode too. To go over an example, let's take the Gundam Mudrock here. It costs 6 points, it has 450 HP and it is a paper type. It's built for both ground and space and can move up to 5 tiles at a time. On sand and in the mountains, it has a mobility advantage, while in the outer space and in the atmosphere, the Mudrock struggles a lot. Stat-wise, the Mudrock has an A in attack, B in defense and B in speed. 
The number under it is the amount of damage it can deal using its map bombardment attack, not counting any type advantages or other modifiers. It has a beam rifle, two cannons as a charge shot, beam saber, a tackle, and a pair of grenade launchers as its special attack. Anyway, now that you know how to work with these stat sheets, this is where the fun begins. At the start of any match of Capital Wars, each player starts off with a single base and a set amount of units. This is your main base and once the round commences, a random team is selected to go first, and you are now tasked with either covering 70% of the map with your team color, killing every enemy unit as in the whole formation, not just the ones already on the field, or capturing the main enemy base. It's a simple game of turn-based turf wars, where you can use units and capture the bases as some sort of beacons in order to cover wider areas. Whenever these link-ups take place, any enemy unit within the area it covers will take damage. This can be done even after you cover the area already, which allows you to scratch the enemy troops up even more before the combat commences. Moving your units onto base tiles allows you to capture them and spawn in more units. So yeah, that's the fastest way to deploy the rest of your team. To do so, the capturing unit in question has to be outside of its transform state unless it's a Gaia Gundam, in which case you get to capture tiles and bases anyway. Dog mode or not. There's also some bases that serve as map weapons instead. On top of that, depending on the type of unit, there is multiple actions that can be performed outside of movement. Some can be transformed, some can bombard tiles, and if you have ships, those can carry your other units around. This is a full summary of the way combat works in the game SD Gundam Gashpon Wars. There's a set of modifiers and other do that, such as round timer, stage pickups or the unit detection mechanic, but all of these are a bit outside of the scale of this video. Besides, you probably wouldn't want me to stretch this one out anyway. All you really need to know about detecting enemy units, if they're not on the map already, is that whenever an enemy is close to one of your tiles or units, or if you do a link up, it will be revealed on the map. Same goes for when you finish moving a transformed unit. There's often a radius in which it detects enemy units too. So that concludes this guide. If you found this one useful, feel free to let me know. And if you feel like backing the channel fiscally, there are links in the video's description. Have a good one, and this is Shirtlad, signing out.